Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to Olive Board. Uh, my name is Dinkar Purwar. Uh, and again, we are continuing with our lecture series on ARD Current Affairs, MCQs. Uh, hello, Mili. Uh, hello, Nilesh. Welcome to the session. I welcome you all in this session. And this is going to be our uh, lecture number 16. And here we'll be covering the July 2021 uh, current affairs that are important current affairs. And uh, I hope everybody got prepared for this session. Uh, and I welcome you everybody in this session. So let's don't waste any time and we'll start just uh, doing with our uh, question and answers and uh, just, what, just one minute. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the first question for today is recently, uh, India first agriculture export facilitation center is established in which of the following places, Panji, uh, Coimbatore, Pune, Lucknow or Ludhiana, which one? Recently, Indian first agriculture export facilitation center is established at which of the following place? Uh, start answering guys, start answering, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm waiting for answers. Yeah. Let me see who's answering. Uh, yeah. So, hello, Shruti. Welcome to the session. Uh, so, Nilesh is saying Pune. Nitin, welcome. Welcome. Good evening. So, everybody is saying, okay, Nilesh is living in Pune. Great, great, great. So, Mili is saying Pune. Shruti is saying Pune. So, everybody is saying Pune. So, let's see the answer. The answer of this question is Pune. The answer of this question is Pune. Okay. Now, India first agriculture uh, export facilitation center is established at Pune, Maharashtra by Maratha Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture, uh, agriculture uh, in association with the National Bank. The new facilitation center will work as one-stop centers where exporter in the agriculture sector, they will get proper global uh, as per the global standards. Okay. So, the facility will be available to anyone in the agriculture sector who plans to export their products overseas and center will also bring the expertise from the other places uh, re regarding the current agro exporters and government officials. So this will help the new exporters and it will also have an effect on properly uh, dealing with the farm to folk chain, like from direct farm to your plates. Okay, so the process includes the export registration then market assessment, standards of recipient countries and adjustment required to match those standards or these things are there. Okay. Now, question number two. Recently, Union Cabinet had decided to allow state-run APMC to access financial facility through its Agriculture Infrastructure Fund. For APMC, interest subvention up for loan up to DASH will be provided for each project of different infrastructure type. How much? Rupees 20 lakh, 50 lakh, 1 crore, 2 crore or 5 crore. So I'm waiting for the answer. So Nilesh is saying the answer is D, that is two crore, okay. Anybody else? Uh, Ritten is not sure, 50 lakh. Shruti is saying two crore, very sure she is, I think. Even when you write the answer in the chat box, I can uh, find out the kind of uh, confidence you have. Very good, okay. So the answer of this question is two crore. The answer of this question is two crore, okay. Now, the center has decided to allow the state and market yard to access financial facilities. So the union cabinet has decided to extend the agriculture infrastructure fund to state agencies. Okay. For APMC, interest subvention for loan up to rupees 2 crore will be provided for each project of different infrastructure type like cold storage, sorting, grading, and assessing silos, etc. within the same market yard. So the overall period of the scheme has extended to 2032 to 33. Okay. Okay, now at present interest subvention loan of rupees two, uh, 2 crore is at one location is eligible under the scheme. So in case one eligible entity put up projects in different location, all such projects will be now eligible for the interest subvention for up to rupees 2 crore. However, the private sector, the limit of maximum of 25 such projects is there. Okay, so this is the answer 2 crore. Okay, it's okay, Nathan, no problem. Okay, so now. Now we are moving to the question number three. As per the second advance estimate of horticulture crop production, horticulture production for the crop year 2020 to 21 is projected to be a record. How much? That is 309.86 million ton, 314.86 million ton, 319.86 or 324.86 or 329.86. So Nitin is saying 329.86. Eight six, eight six. Okay, Nilesh is saying A. That is three hundred nine point eight six. Okay, uh, 
Shruti is saying 329.86. Very good. So let's see. Let's see. I will just right now we'll be seeing the answer of this question. The answer of this question is 329.86 million. Say. So 329.86 million tons. Okay, the answer is 329.86 billion. See, these are some of the very important questions that we have sorted out from various uh, uh, places uh, so that you can get the proper uh, in-on experience so that uh, you don't have to go uh, by each and every note. So we are just bringing you uh, just for a revision also. So see, we'll be coming with a revision also in the coming sessions. But these are some of the very important current affairs of the month of July. Okay. Yes. Yes. Now, yes, Nith, uh, Nithin, very good. This is the most important things are there. Okay. So as per the second advanced estimate, so these are the second advanced estimate. This is already projected by the government of India. So for the crop year 2020 uh, and 21 has been recorded to 329.86 billion ton, nearly 3% higher than 320.4% earlier in this day. Okay. So the area under horticulture crop has increased. Okay. So with potato output registering the healthy double digit growth is there. Okay. So, and also the total vegetable production during the crop year has gone by around 196.27 billion tons earlier it is also lower than that and even fruit production remain more or less same so potato production is slated to be 53.869 million tons and production of plantation crop has increased so similarly aromatics and medicinal plants registered a growth of 6.11 per se okay now Recently, question number four, recently GI certified fuzzle mango variety from West Bengal has been exported to which of the following country? Bahrain, Qatar, Russia, Poland, or Iran? GI certified fuzzle mango variety from West Bengal has been exported to which of the following countries? So Shruti, Nilesh, uh, Nitin is saying Bahrain. Nilesh is saying Bahrain. Okay, Shruti is saying Bahrain. Okay. Great. Anybody else who wanted to answer this question? I am waiting for them. They can also answer this question. They can be participative in this session. Okay. So the answer of this question is Bahrain. Okay. The answer of this question is Bahrain. Okay. So the Union Ministry of Commerce and Industries confirmed that a consignment of ge uh, geographical indication certified fuzzle mango from the Malada district of West Bengal has been exported to Bahrain. So uh, fuzzle mango Fuzzly mango is a GI certified tag variety from Malada district, Malda district. The consignment of Fuzzil mango was exported by the APEDA registered uh, DM Enterprises Kolkata, imported by Al Jazeera Group Bahrain. So apparently in June 2021, a mango promotion program spanning across the entire week was conducted in Bahrain, where 16 varieties of the fruits, including the GEO certified Crispathan and Lakshambhog of West Bengal and Jardwala of Bihar was displayed. So while most of the states in India have a mango plantation, but Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and Karnataka are having the major share. Okay. So these are the places which are having the major share of the mango production. Now, question number five. Recently, Ambuja Cement Foundation has joined hand with which of the following for implementation of its employability through a skill initiative project, second phase. Ministry of Rural Development, NABARD, Bird Institute, both one and two, all of the above. So Nilesh is saying B, that is NABARD. Okay. Nitin is saying Nabard, Shruti is saying Nabard. Okay, very good. Very good. Anybody else who wanted to answer? Okay, fine. So we'll be seeing the answer of this question. The answer of this question is Nabard. The answer of this question is Nabard. Okay, now question. Uh, so Ambuja Cement Foundation has joined hand with National Bank of Agriculture and Rural Development for implementation of the employability through a skill initiative project, second phase. So, so uh, ACF has received, uh, Amuja Cement Foundation has received assistance from the NABAR under the uh, Gramya Vikas Nidhi, a fund that is created for the development of the off-farm sector initiative. ESIP will pro provide the skill training across the 19 Amuja uh, Cement Foundation location for a period of two years. Okay, uh, in 12 trades that has already reached over 4,000 youth despite the pandemic. So besides skill training, the course will include the soft skill courses also, leadership skills course also, and various training modules will be there. On completion of the training, the student will be provided with placement and hard hand-holding support for the post placement. Okay, now. Question number six. Recently in July, Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairy has launched the online course mobile app Matsya Setu. It is developed by ICAR Central Institute of Freshwater Agriculture, which is situated in which of the following city? 
Okay, so Nilesh is saying already that uh, Bhubaneswar, Bangalore, Chennai, Kolkata, Pune. So Nilesh has already answered that is Bhubaneswar. I'm waiting for some more people. Uh, Nitin is saying Bangalore, Shruti is saying Bhubaneswar. Okay. Hello, Ankush. Welcome to the session. Ankush form already has came. Okay. So you have to fill that form, I think. Okay, so the answer of this question is Bhumneshwar. The answer of this question is Bhumneshwar. So recently, Ministry of Fishery, Animal Husbandry and Dairying has launched the course that is Must Setu. It has been developed by, so you, this is also very important, uh, who is developing this? Okay, so it is developed by ICAR, Central Institute of Freshwater Aquaculture, that is in Bhumneshwar. And the financial aid uh, is from the National Fishery Development Board, Hedra. Path. Okay, so the goal of the online course app is to distribute the most up to date freshwater agriculture technologies for to the country to aqua farmer. Much say to app uh, has the species wise, subject wise, self learning online course module. Uh, it is having a detail about various type of traps, catfish, camp liberal, ornamental fish, and pearl farming, and all these things will be there. So, better management practice how you have to follow better management practice, various modules will be there. Uh, to motivate the learner and provide the lively learning experience, quiz and test will be there. Then there is also e-certificate that can also be auto-generated. Farmer can also ask their doubts over there. Learning about the latest technologies will impact the adoption of the scientific approach in the fish farming, resulting in increased production and profitability. Okay. Now, question number seven. Recently, Union Agriculture Minister Narin Singh Tomar has inaugurated National Horticulture Board Center at which of the following place? Patna, Kanpur, New Delhi, Nagpur, or Gwalior. Recently, Union Agriculture Minister Narin Singh Tomar has inaugurated National Horticulture Board Center at which of the following place? So, Nilesh Singh E, that is Gwalior. Nitin Singh Gwalior. Okay. I'm waiting for other people. They can also just write the answer. Shruti Singh Gwalior. Okay. Anybody else who wanted to answer this question? They can also answer this question. Okay. So we are moving forward over here. So Gwalior is the answer. So this is the Gwalior. Fine. Now, uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare Government of India has opened the center of the state uh, uh, of state in the Madhya Pradesh, Sri Narendra Singh Tomar uh, is a minister, has uh, inaugurated the Center for National Horticulture Board at Gwalior to take forward the activities and program of the National Horticulture Board. So, with the opening of the new cat, uh, center of National Horticulture Board at Gwalior, farmers of not only the Gwalior division but also from the 21 division of uh, 21 division of Madhya Pradesh, including the grid region of Gwalior and the Chambal will be benefited under the schemes of National Horticulture Board. As of now, National Horticulture Board had only one center in Madhya Pradesh at Bhopal. However, keeping in the view the huge geographical area of the state, so that is why they have created another uh, center uh, and physical distance of several uh, districts from the area from the Bhopal. Farmer usually find it very difficult to avail the benefits. Uh, of the schemes of National Horticulture Board and technical guidance with respect to a laser development in the horticulture sector. That is why a new center has been developed in the Gwalior region. Okay. Now, question number eight. KVIC has recently launched which of the following projects to boost tribal income and bamboo-based economy in Rajasthan? Gold, told, bold, hold, and mold. I think uh, formation of the options over here is very easy. Correct? Yeah. So, Nilesh is saying C, that is bold. Okay. Anybody else who wanted to answer? Bold. Nitin is saying bold. Shruti is saying bold. Okay. Anybody else answering this question? Anybody else wanted to answer? B for bamboo. Okay, 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 okay. So, this is the trick that you have learned. Very good. Nice trick. B for bamboo. Very good. So at least uh, you have a one uh, important uh, point to remember over here, B for bold. So that is why you go by bold. Fine. So the answer is bold over here. Okay. Bold. So we'll be seeing the full form of that over here. Bold stands for bamboo oasis on land in droughts in Udaipur, Rajasthan. The project name is Bold. It's a first of its kind exercise in India, which was launched by the tribal village Nisla Manwa in Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan. Project Bold will seek to create a bamboo-based green patches. Okay. And in align with the Prime Minister Narin Modi, call for reducing the land degradation and prevention of the desertification in our country. 
So the initiative has launched as a part of KVIC Khadi Bamboo Festival, uh, based on the we are, as we are celebrating 75 years of independence, that is Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. 5,000 sampling of a special bamboo species, Bambusa totla and Bambusa polymorpha, especially brought from the Assam, has been planted over 25 biga of region, that is around 16 acres of vacant arid gram panchayat land. KVIC has thus created a world record of planting the highest number of bamboo sampling on the single day at one location. So KVIC is set to replicate the proje uh, project at village Dholera in Ahmedabad district in the Gujarat and also in Leh Ladakh region by the August this year. So total 15,000 bamboo sampling will be planted before August 21. Now question number nine. Recently, which of the following state has approved cattle protection bill? Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Assam, Gujarat, or Haryana. Recently, which of the following state has approved the cattle protection bill? Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Assam, Gujarat, or Haryana. Which one? What is the answer for this? Has approved the cattle protection bill. Cattle protection bill. So, Nilesh Singh C, that is Assam. Okay. Which state has approved the cattle protection bill? Nobody is answering. Shruti, don't know. No problem, Shruti. Don't worry. Okay. Anybody else wanted to answer? Anybody else who wanted to answer this question? I'm just waiting for them. No problem. No problem, Nitin. Uh, we'll be just uh, doing it. So I think people are having confusion between Uttar Pradesh, Assam, and maybe Gujarat. Right? So there is a confusion between only Uttar Pradesh, Assam, and Gujarat. Okay. So the answer for this question is Assam. And uh, very good, Nilesh. Uh, correct answer. The answer is Assam. So the Assam cabinet has approved a bill for protection cattle. The uh, It seeks to replace the existing Assam Cattle Prevention Act of 1950 that allows the slaughter of the cattle above 14 years. Okay. So the proposed legislation would ban the movement of the cattle to and from the state primarily to check the smuggling to the Bangladesh. As you all know that from Assam, lots of cattle are smuggled to Bangladesh. Okay, so three other states like our uh, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh have legislation to protect the cows. The cabinet also approved making Gurkhas residing in four districts of the borderland territorial region before 2003 a protect class in the tribal belt of the blocks. The BTR came under the sixth schedule. So a similar, uh, a similar status for the Gurkhas has been approved in the eastern Assam, Sadia tribal belt along with the Moran, Matak, Ayom and Chutia community. Okay, so no problem, no problem, uh, Nitin. Uh, that's okay, not a problem. Okay, question number 10. Recently, which of the following has set up an export promotion forum to promote export of dairy products and address various issues in the sectors? NAFID, Ministry of Agriculture, Niti Ayo, APEDA, or FSSAI? Recently, which of the following has set up an export promotion forum to promote export of dairy products and address various issues of the sector? Nafid, Ministry of Agriculture, Niti Ayo, APEDA, or FSSAI. So, Nathan is saying APEDA, Nilesh is saying APEDA, okay, Shruti is saying APEDA, okay, okay, okay. Uh, anybody else who wanted to answer, please don't feel shy, please keep answering, no problem. Even if, even if you are answering wrongly, there's no worry. Hello, Anshu, welcome to the session, welcome to the session. Happy to see you again in the session. So Anshu is also saying D. Very good. Very good. So let's see the answer of this question. The answer of this question is APEDA. Okay. So Agriculture and Process Food Product Export Development Authority, that is APEDA, has set up an export promotion forum to promote the export of the dairy products and it tests the various issues in the sectors. So the EPF will augment trade and include officials of the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry, and Dairy and Export Inspection Council. The authority has identified two clusters. Okay, two clusters like Mathura in Uttar Pradesh and Manasakrata in Gujarat to develop the dairy sector. The farmers and the small dairy owners in these cluster will give virtual training and aided in the capacity building to become the exporter. The financial assistance will be provided towards the development of the infrastructure facility, quality, and market. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay, Anshu, no problem, no problem, okay? Now, question number 11. Recently, which of the following country will help 75 villages in eight states to transform traditional farms into the modern intensive farm? Chile, Israel, South Africa, Argentina, and France. We have done this question earlier. 
we have uh, we we know actually i have also used this in my current affairs session so please answer it correctly which of the following country will help 75 villages in eight states to transform traditional farm into modern intensive farmer so nilesh is saying israel okay okay anybody else please answer anybody else they can also answer this question nitin is saying israel shruti is saying i think israel okay Anshu is saying Israel. Shuti, no, it's okay, no problem. Shuti, don't worry about it. Okay, so I'm waiting for some more people. I think many people are there. I think I'm just waiting for them also to answer the question. Please, guys, be participative in the session uh, because it is for all of you only. So please make uh, good use of this session properly. Okay, come on. Okay, so the answer of this question is Israel. The answer of this question is Israel. Okay, so a part of its deepening bilateral ties with Indian agriculture, Israel will help seventy-five villages in eight states to transform the traditional farm into the modern intensive farms, which can provide farmer with a better net income and better livelihood. The Indo-Israeli Village of Excellence of Project, that is I I V O E, Indian Israel Villages of Excellence Project, is a new program under the fifth Indo-Israel Agriculture Project that is signed between the two countries. Uh, Okay, so under the IAAP, uh, the first initiative came in 2008. Israel has set up 29 center of excellence in 12 states, implementing advanced incentive agriculture uh, tailored to a local condition. Beside five such center of excellence are uh, under the center of uh, under construction. So this COE will generate the proper knowledge. Demonstrate best practices and train the farmers. Every year, they produce around 25 million uh, quality vegetable seedling to an a 3.87 lakh quality food plants and train more than 1.2 lakhs Indian farmer about the latest technologies in the field of hearty culture. Okay, now question number 12. Recently, which of the following union minister became the brand ambassador of Khadi Prakritik Paint? Nitin Gadgari ji, Jitendra Singh, Narendra Singh Tomar, Amit Shah, or Rajna Singh? This also I have covered in my current affairs session. This question also I have covered in my current affairs session. Okay, Nilesh is saying C. Nitin is saying uh, Nitin G. Okay, so I think Nilesh will be changing his answer. So Shruti is saying Nitin Gadgari. Okay. Okay. Uh, waiting for some more people to answer this question. Uh, okay. A A. Very good. Nilesh. Very good. Uh, Anshu. And even you know Nitin Gadgari G has also ordered this khadi paint for his house also. He has also ordered this paint for his house to be painted by this house. Okay, so the answer of this question is Nitin Gadgari. So he is the brand ambassador of Kadi Prakritik Paint. Okay, now now we are moving to the next question. Next question is uh, sorry. Uh, let's explain this. So Ministry of Road Transport and Highway and MSME Minister Sri Nitin Gadgari ji declared himself as the brand ambassador of the Kadi Prakritik Paint. He would promote it across the country so as to encourage every entrepreneur to take up the manufacturing of the cow dung paint. He has virtually inaugurated the new automated manufacturing of the Kadi Prakritik Paint India, first and only paint made from the cow dung in the Jaipur region. Yeah, yeah. Nitin Gadgari ji has already ordered uh, some liters of uh, Khadi Prakritik paint for his house. Okay. Yes. So if you go to my last few lectures on uh, Thursday, so you will find out that I have discussed about these things. Okay. Now, question number 13. Recently, government has announced to raise groundnut output to 14.15 million tons by 2022, 23, 2023, 24, 24 to 25, 25 to 26, or 26 to 27. Government has announced to raise groundnut output to 14.15 billion ton by which year? Okay, no problem, Nitin. Nilesh is saying C, that is 24 to 25. Okay. Anybody else? Shruti is saying 24 to 25. Prashant, welcome Prashant to the session. Prashant is also saying C, that is 24 to 25. Okay. Anybody else answering here? Anybody else? Okay, hello, hello, Prashant. Anybody else wanted to answer over here? Okay, so we will be seeing the answer. The answer of this question is 25 to 26. The answer is 2025 to 26. I hope everybody has noted down the answer properly. 
So the answer is 25 to 26. So the government has an ambitious objective of increasing the groundnut production of the from the current level of 10.12 to 14.15 by 25 to 26. So Shobham Thakur, uh, that is our uh, joint secretary in oil seed of Department of Agriculture uh, and Cooperative under the Union Ministry of Agriculture has announced this in the webinar. The webinar is on the Wonder Nut, Ground Nut, which is, was jointly organized by the solvent extractor. To achieve this, the main focus would be the area of expansion, increase the uh, productivity through the high yielding varieties. And uh, also the area will be expanded in the rice fallow areas through the intercropping and other measures. The productivity enhancement is being taken simultaneously by the ICER, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, and uh, to come out with more variety of different regions. Okay, so here, uh, this is about the answer and the answer is 25 to 26. Okay, so now we are moving to the next question. Now, the next question is, recently in July, TEFE has announced a free tractor rental scheme to support small farmers of which of the following states. Recently, TEFE has announced a free tractor rental scheme to support small farmers of which of the following states. Gujarat, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, or Telangana? Which one? Recently, okay, let me see Nilesh Singh D, that is Karnataka, okay, uh, Nitin, okay, no problem, Nitin. Uh, Tefe has announced a free tractor rental schemes to support small farmers of which of the following states. Shruti is Singh, Tamil Nadu, okay. Okay, okay, I'm waiting for your answers. Let me see. Uh, we'll be seeing the answer properly now. Hello, Sunil. Hello, Sunil. Welcome to the session. So, Sunil is also saying that Karnataka. Anshu is saying Tamil Nadu. So, there is a confusion between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. So, there is a confusion between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. So, let's clear off uh, your uh, confusion. So, the answer here is Tamil Nadu. The answer of here is Tamil Nadu. Fine. Tamil Nadu is the answer over here. Okay. Yes, Anshu. Yes, very good. So, TEFE, that is Tractor and Farmer Equipment Limited, has announced a free tractor rental scheme to support small farmers of the Tamil Nadu. The free tractor rental scheme is in addition to the earlier contribution of the oxygen concentrator procurement of the oxygen cylinder and support to the planned mass. Uh, immunization program. So what are the key features over here are the key features are the total outlay towards all the TEFE contribution to the COVID relief of rupees 15 crore. The free tractor rental scheme would cover approximately 1,20,000 acres and will benefit around 50,000 farmer. So it will be available from May 2021 through July 2021 across the Tamil Nadu. Okay. So so TEFE will offer its 16,500 massive production and ISHA and 26,800 implements on the free to cost rental basis to the small farmers owing two acres or less. So farmer can rent on higher tractors or farms implement using the TEFE digital platform of the Tamil Nadu government, Uzuan app, or, the, or they can call the toll free number. So the scheme will be implemented with the support of agriculture department of the Tamil Nadu and the district officials. Okay, now question number 15. So we are moving to the question number 15. As per the third advance estimate, country reaps a record harvest of dash of food grain. 302.43 million ton, 305.43 or 308.43 million ton or 311.43 million ton or 314.40 million tons. As per the third advance estimate, country reaps a record harvest of dash of number of food grain. How much million tons of food grain? So Nilesh is saying B, that is 305.43, Shruti is saying 302. Okay. Sometimes answering this question becomes a little bit uh, confusing, right? Because these are the exact data that you should know, right? So Nilesh is saying 305, Anshu is saying 305. Okay. Anshu, okay, fine. Uh, anybody else wanted to answer this question here? Anybody else wanted to answer the question over here? I am waiting for them to answer this question. Okay, 305.43 million tons. Okay, 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 no problem. Fine. So the answer is 305.43 million tons. Very good, guys. Very good, guys. For the correct answer, 305.43 million tons. So as per the third advanced estimate, country reaps are our record harvest of 305.43 million tons 
of food grain nearly it is 2.6 time more than 297.5 million tons so so rice output estimated crosses 120 million tons marks for the first time and it is touching 121.46 million ton wheat output is projected to be almost a million ton more as compared to the previous year so the production of the pulses and the oil seed is estimated to grow by the 10% and the while the pulses output is projected to be a record 25.56 million ton that of oil seed is expected to be 36.57 million ton okay so this is about all the data okay uh, about this uh, food grain production now question number 16 now we are moving to the question number 16 recently which of the following state has rolled out an incentive scheme to boost production of orthodox and specialty tea west bengal assam sikkim bihar or meghalaya which of the following state has rolled out an incentive scheme to boost production of orthodox and specialty tea which one uh anshu as per our uh, record right now it is 300.43 okay so we'll be updating you on that uh, you will get a updated current affairs if, if any changes are there so we'll be just updating that okay so nitin is saying the answer is assam very good let's see let's see if the answer is correct or not anybody else anshu is saying the answer is b that is assam okay anybody else come on guys find out the answer tell the answer i am just waiting for all of you to answer this question recently which of the following state has rolled out an incentive scheme to boost production of orthodox and specialty tea what happened only two guys knows this answer nobody has read the current affair for this month ha huh? very important question okay so the answer for this question is assam the answer for this question is assam now the assam government has rolled out an incentive scheme to boost production of the orthodox and specialty tea launching the assam tea industry uh, special incentive scheme that is eti sis 2020 by chief minister hemant biswas sharma sharma highlighted his government plan for the land reform for of tea estates and uh, the primary idea behind this scheme is to establish Oh, okay, okay, Nitin. No problem, no problem. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We are just uh, they will update you. They will update uh, soon, as soon as possible. Okay, don't worry about that. Okay. So, Chief Minister uh, has already uh, launched this scheme. The primary idea behind this scheme is to establish a balance between the production of the CTC tea and Orthodox variety. Orthodox tea has a good demand in the overseas market. So, Orthodox and especially tea currently accounts for around eleven percent of the state annual production. the cost of manufacturing orthodox tea per kilogram is around 20 to 25% higher than the common teas okay so under the ati sis the state government will provide the interest subvention of 3% and the working capital loan and subsidy of rupees 7 per kg of production of the orthodox and specialty variety moreover a uh, 25% subsidy for the purchase of the new machinery for the production of orthodox and specialty will be given the agriculture income tax holiday for 3 years has also been included in the scheme okay now question number 70 recently government has reduced import duty on crude palm oil to 5% 10% 15% 20% or 25% recently government has reduced import duty on crude palm oil to which percent how much percent recently government has reduced import duty on crude palm oil to which percent 5% 10% 15% 20% or 25% start answering guys come on come on waiting for your answers nitin not no shruti saying 10% okay so the current affair will be updated very soon don't worry about that okay come on guys anybody else who wanted to answer this question anybody else who wanted to answer this question i am waiting for them they can also answer this question i can see many people in the box chat box and uh, i think people are not answering the questions at least answer it uh, we'll be see whether you are right or wrong don't worry about that okay so the answer for this question is 10% the answer for this question is 
ten percent. So uh, government has reduced the import duty on crude palm oil by ten percentage. Okay, this is the answer. Very good, Shruti. Thanks for telling. So the government has reduced the basic custom duty on the crude palm oil to ten percent, which will help bring down the edible oil prices in the retail market. So the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Custom is a notification cut the basic custom duty on the crude oil by ten percent. Okay. To around now, it is thirty-seven point five percent. The notification shall come into effect from the thirtieth June, twenty twenty-one, and will remain up to force till thirtieth September, twenty twenty-one. So, as per the data industry body SEA, India import of palm oil rose by forty-eight percent to around seven lakh sixty-nine thousand six hundred two tons in May, twenty twenty-one. That is on higher shipment of wood prices. Okay. So, country total vegetable import oil rose by sixty-eight percent to twelve point four nine lakh tons. The share of palm oil is more than sixty percent of the country total vegetable import. India, the world leading vegetable oil buyer, has imported around four lakh tons palm oil in the May, twenty twenty one. Okay, so thank you, Anshu. Very good. Very good. The answer is this ten percent. Now, question number eighty. Recently, uh, APDA has set up an export promotion body to boost dairy export. APDA has identified two cluster to develop the dairy products. Which of the following is the two cluster identified by the APDA? Mathura and Patiala, Patiala or Gwalior, Gwalior or Banaskatha, Mathura or Banaskantha or Bhopal and Surat. If you, we have already done this question earlier today only. Okay, so Shruti Singh four that is Mathura and Banaskatha. Okay, then Nilesh is saying C that is Gwalior and Banaskatha. So there is a confusion between option three and four. So I'm waiting for other people for answer this question. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody else wanted to answer over here? So the answer for this question is Mathura and Banas Kanta. So answer is fourth option. Very good. Very good. Uh, our Nitin and Anshu uh, and even Shruti. Very good. Now. The Agriculture, Process, and Food Product Export Development Authority has set up an export promotion forum. Okay, the EPA will augment the trade and include the officials of the Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry, and Dairy. The authority has identified two clusters. One is in Mathura, and other one is in Banaskatha in Gujarat. So Mathura is in Uttar Pradesh, and Banaskatha it is in Gujarat to develop the dairy products. Yes, yes, yes. I told. Uh, Uh, like in the earlier question, I have told about this. The farmer and the small dairy owner in this cluster will be given the virtual training and aided in the capacity building to become the exporter. The financial assistance will be provided towards the development of the infrastructure, uh, facility, quality, and the market. So the ministry is making effort to strengthen the infrastructure for the quality milk production, procurement, and processing. These schemes are national program for dairy development, national dairy plan, phase one dairy and production development schemes. So the ministry has also uh, has a scheme to develop the infrastructure under the Animal Husbandry Infrastructure Development Fund, which is a part of Atm Nirbhar Bharat. So in this scheme, investment by the entrepreneurs, private firm, companies, farmer, farmer produce organization uh, are incentivized to establish dairy processing, value addition features, and animal feed plant. So this is the answer. Now question number nineteen. Recently, weavers of which of the following city is seeking the GI tag for the Nagaman cotton sari? Salem, Coimbatore, Tanjore, Vellore, well or Madurai? Which of the uh, from the which place weavers of which of the following cities are seeking GI tag for Nagaman cotton sari? Okay, so Nilesh is saying C. That is Tanjore. Nitin is not knowing. Shruti, no idea. No problem. No problem. I I'll just tell you the answer of this. I'm just waiting for some more people to answer this question. Many people are there in the chat box, but uh, what happened, guys? Please be participative in the session, guys. Please don't feel any kind of shyness over here, because we all are in the same category. Okay, we have all have to give the exams. There is no question of right or wrong over here. Okay, so we are just practicing over here. Okay, so now the answer for this question is poem batu. The answer of this question is poem batu. So weavers from fifty cooperative societies, including our Nagaman, uh, Vendampacheri, then Solik, then Kintarudau, and the Pochali areas, have applied for the GI tag for the Nagaman cotton sari. 
the application has been facilitated through a direct, uh, director of handlooms and textile from the state government to the registry of GI on July 2. Okay, the, also known as the village pot sari. It is also known as the village pot sari. It is also called as village pot sari. The handloom sari is woven by the master weavers hailing in the Nagaman, a rural area in the Coimbatore region. The sari is famous for its thickness, which is on an average of around 86 to 90 picks per inches, its length, durability, contrasting colors, and multicolor thread works of motifs, checks, and designs. The border is woven with a rich thread work design and the extra weft. The traditional Langman cotton sari measure around 7.3 meters to 8.2 meters and is woven using the 80s count cotton yarn, both in the wrap and the weft. We were explained already. Now, yes, yes, yes. It is uh, just a place nearby Coimbatore. So moisture laden wind from the Western Ghats also adds up to the unique feature. So why this unique feature of the sari is coming? Because of the moisture laden wind from the Western Ghat that is coming that adds up to the unique feature to the Nagman uh, cotton sari as the peak time for manufacturing this sari in the month of June to November. So the main raw material used in the 80s combed cotton is to make the fabric thick and make it perfect for any climate. Okay, so it is making a... A uh, little bit thick so that it is better for using at the all climate. Okay. Now, question number 20. Recently, first commercial shipment of Mishri variety of cherries from Kashmir has been exported to which of the following city? Budapest, Dubai, Kabul, Seoul, or Lisbon. Recently, first commercial shipment of Mishri variety of cherries from Kashmir has been exported to which of the following city? Budapest, Dubai, Kabul, Seoul, or Lisbon. Oh, this is also not known. No problem. Once the current affair uh, dashboard gets updated, you will get all the information over there. At least you know the question. How the how the how you have to read about the question. What, uh, what data you have to focus on and what data you have to leave. So Shruti is saying the answer is Dubai. Okay. So let me see. I am just waiting for some more people. They can also answer here so that uh, uh, I can just show you the answer for this question. Come on, come on. So Nilesh is saying Dubai. Okay. Anybody else here? Anybody else wants to answer this question? Okay. So the answer for this question is Dubai. The answer of this question is Dubai. Now, in a step toward boosting the horticulture export, the first commercial shipment of Mishri variety of cherries from the Kashmir Valley has been exported to the Dubai from Srinagar. It is supported by APEDA, National Referral Laboratory, and National Research Center for the Grapes Pune, provided support for ensuring food safety and quality in the shipment, which would help create a brand for cherries, especially in the Middle East countries. Prior to the shipment, a sample of the consignment was sent in the middle of the June from Srinagar to Dubai through the air, which was transported from the Mumbai. Following the encouraging response from the consumers in the Dubai, the first commercial shipment of the mystery varieties of cherry was exported to Dubai. Prior to the shipment, the cherries were harvested, cleaned, and packed by the APDA registered exporters, while the technical input were provided by the Sher e Kashmir University. Agriculture, Science and Technology of the Kashmir. About what is the, about this cherry uh, variety? Mystery variety of cherry not only tastes delicious but also contain vitamins, minerals, and plant compounds with the health benefit. The Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir produce more than 95% of the total country production of the commercial varieties of the cherry. It produces around four varieties of cherry that is double, makamali, mishri, and Italy varieties of cherry. So the answer is it has been transported from Jammu and Kashmir to Dubai. Mishri variety of cherry. So uh, these are the 20 questions for the month of uh, July. Okay. So in the next week, we uh, might be doing the revision of all these sessions. Okay. Revision of these exercises. And uh, uh, for this Thursday, please be prepared for uh, Minister, uh, Ministry of Agriculture and Ministry of Fisheries and Development uh, at 6 p.m. I will be taking some questions from that. And also, I will be taking a live lectures at 8.30 for the uh, previous, uh, previous uh, week's current affairs. Okay. So, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, never forget to like, subscribe, and follow our uh, channel. And uh, please share these lectures with everybody, those who are uh, in need. We'll be seeing you on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the session. See you. Bye-bye. Take care.